Hey guys, in this video I'm going to talk about the basics of simplifying radicals. So we're going to be looking at problems that kind of work like this. As a reminder, to get the most out of these videos, you want to pause and try the examples when prompted, and I do have free guided notes available. And if you could do me a solid, uh, if you like this video, then please actually like it, comment with any questions or feedback at the end, and share and subscribe to this channel. Now, before I get started, you should already know a list of squares and cubes. So I wanted to show you what that list is. If you don't know this list, I would recommend that you write it down. And even if you do know like the, this list, you probably want to write this down on a, on a spare piece of paper anyway, so you can pause the video and just write it all down. So I highly suggest that you have this list next to you while we do this video and while you're trying examples. You will see why in a few minutes. So you might have to back up if you, if you haven't done this. Okay, so where we're going to start in this video is just talking about the multiplication property of radicals. So basically, if I have something like this, oops, sorry, not three. So if I have like the nth root of a times the nth root of b, so you can multiply these together just by doing a times b. As long as they have the same index, you are totally allowed to multiply these two things together. All right. So, that being said, let's take a look at a few basic examples. So like I said, uh, this is the cube root of 2 times the cube root of 3. So I'll just multiply 2 times 3, and I will get the cube root of 6. Or with the square root of 7 times the square root of 5. So again, I'll just multiply those together, and I'll get the square root of 35. So, why don't you try these two and hit play when you're ready. So with this first one, this is going to be the cube root of, so 3 times 9 is 27. Although notice that you could actually simplify this, so this is now going to just equal 3. So sometimes that happens when you're multiplying things together. For this next one, so now I've got uh, the cube root of 6 times the cube root of 9. So if I multiply those together, I get 54. Now, one thing that's maybe kind of interesting to think about here, and this, this will help motivate the lesson for today. So think about six for a second. What times what makes six? Well, I could rethink of this as two times three, right? That makes six. And then notice this part here, if I break it up like this, works just like this. And I know what this equals, right? So this is the cube root of 27, so this actually equals 3. So an alternative way that you could actually write this would be, uh, let's make this maybe the cube root of 27 times the cube root of 2. And then this is 3 times the cube root of 2. So this is what we're talking about in this video. You can break things up in strategic ways. So just like you're able to multiply two things together, you're also able to go backwards because of this property and break up uh, different factors that are under uh, a radical. So you can break up the radicand. And if you do that in a strategic way, then you'll actually simplify the entire radical. And this is what we're going to be trying to get to today. So what I want to do is I want to explain how to simplify the square root of 12. So what you have to do with all of these examples is you have to refer to your list of squares, cubes, and all the others, and all that good stuff. So this is why having this in front of you might be handy. So we are talking about the square root of 12. So what you want to do then is you want to refer to your list of squares. So if you're dealing with square roots, you think about squares. If you're dealing with cube roots, you think about cubes. If you're dealing with quartix, so that's fourth roots, then you think about fourth roots, and so on. So Looking at my list of just squares, so looking at this side here, all the parts where this equals to, what's the largest number that will divide into 12 on this list? Well, that would be the 4, right? The 4 will divide into 12. Anything else will not divide into 12. So 4 is the largest number that divides into 12. So what I'm going to do then is I'm actually going to strategically break this up like this. The square root of 12 is going to be equal to the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. And then I know what the square root of 4 is, it's just 2, and I can't break up 3 any farther. This is kind of the basic idea. So let's try that one more time with the square root of 50. So again, you might want to refer back to 
this list here, and you're thinking of just the numbers on this side, what's the largest number that will divide into 50? That would be 25. So I want to break this up then. I think of this as the square root of 25 times the square root of 2. So this is 5 root 2. Just a note on how to make this look nice. You always want to have the number in front of the root. This just doesn't look right if you do 2 times 5. And sometimes what happens is people will get sloppy and they might do something like this. And then it becomes impossible to know what you're trying to refer to. So you want to write the number in front just to make it very, very clear what you're trying to do. So why don't you go ahead and try the square root of 20. So once again, referring to that list of, of squares, the largest square that would divide into 20 is 4. So this is going to be the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. So this is going to equal 2 root 5. So now I want to pivot. That was working with squares. So now what happens when I pivot over to cubes? So once again, I'm going to refer back to this list. And now I'm just thinking about cubes because I have a cube root. So in this list, what's the largest number in this list that will divide evenly into 54? Well, in that case, it would be 27. So if I go back to this, I'm going to break this up as the cube root of 27 times the cube root of 2. So you let this list, just to be very clear with this, you let this list, like cube roots, you let this list here dictate what you're going to divide into it. It has to be something in this so that you can actually break it down all the way. And then the cube root of 27 is just 3. And so this is 3 times the square root of 2. And notice that was what we talked about over here, right? Now we're just thinking about how do you actually approach this on a regular basis. So we, we already actually looked at this example. So now I have a fourth root and a third root here. So I want to give you a chance to look at that list. So hit play when you're ready. So the largest fourth root, or quartic as we call them, the largest fourth root, so if I come over to my list again, here's kind of my, my little list that I'm working with. So 16 in this case would be the largest number that would divide into this. So if I go back to this, this is going to be the fourth root of 16 times the fourth root of 2, and the fourth root of 16 is 2, and I leave this other one alone. Now, uh, this next one, so now it's what is the largest cube, so now we're switching lists again, largest cube that will divide into 24. So again, if I reference my list, this is the largest cube that divides into 24. So I'm going to break this up as the cube root of 8 times the cube root of 3, and then this becomes 2 times the cube root of 3. So just a little pro tip with this. You um, might, so some people when they do this, they get used to that list that I showed and they don't have to think about this and they're just like, oh, this is the number that will divide into this. But a lot of people when they're doing this, they cannot seem to do this without having the list in front of them. So you might find that you always need this list in front of you because sometimes people just get so thrown off at so many numbers and you got squares and cubes and all this stuff. And so some people's brains, like they just kind of get really thrown off because it's so many different numbers to choose from. So if you are one of those people then that has to have this list in front of you and you have to think square root, let me look directly at my squares to figure this out, that's okay, like do that. And when you get to the test, write down this list so that you have it in front of you so that you can continue to be the visual person that you are. So you have to totally make this work for you. I've seen a lot of people try to do this where they really need the list in front of them, but for whatever reason that when like the test comes, they're like, oh, I just want to do it all in my head and it really throws them off. Some people are just much better when they kind of have the visual cues in front of them. And that's a big part of taking math classes is figuring out kind of how your brain thinks about things. So the next thing I want to talk about is um, just how to identify a simplified radical. So I have a list of four things of how you know if a radical is actually fully simplified. And we're going to talk about all of these things over the course of several videos. 
So the first thing is that our simplified radical will not contain any factors that are perfect squares or any factor that are perfect squares. So that's what we're working on in this lesson. If you look at this, um, so this is not uh, perfect squares, but these are, I guess, perfect radicals. So maybe I should strike this instead of calling this perfect squares. We'll say maybe perfect radicals. So um, a simplified radical will not contain any anything that you can break down farther, basically. A simplified radical will not contain any exponents higher than the index. This is something that we're going to talk about in a second. A simplified radical will not contain any fractions. And a simplified radical will not have a radical in the denominator of a fraction. So these are the things that you're going to be looking for as you're simplifying radicals. Right now we're really just working on the first thing in this list. And then in future videos I'm going to show you how to kind of work with the rest of these. So just to kind of get your eyes used to this so that you know what you're looking at, I want to know why are these radicals not simplified. You want to use this list here to kind of help you figure that out. Feel free to write down the list or write down the problems if you need. But looking at this list, why is this list not actually simplified? Hit play when you're ready. So for this first one, this one has a perfect factor or something that we could break down farther. So this I know has the square root of 4 times the square root of 6. So this is exactly what I'm talking about. If you have one of these like factors where you could break down the radical farther, then that may means it's not simplified. This one, so we're not allowed to have no um, radicals in the denominator. Then the next one, you're not allowed to have any fractions also. So a radical is not simplified if it has a fraction under it. And then this last one, so the 8 can be broken down farther, so that violates one thing on the list. But the other thing I want to point out here, so this 8 here, anytime, so this is, these are going to be things we talk about in future videos, but anytime you see an exponent that is higher than this index, this also means that it's not simplified. So this is actually one of the problems here, as is this. Okay, so with that in mind, let's go back to practicing this a little bit more. Uh, so I guess this first one I already kind of did for you, right? So this is the square root of 4 times the square root of 6. So this will be 2 root 6. But the rest of these, just go ahead and hit pause and, and go and look at that list again. Look at that list if you need to. So for this first one, so the largest perfect cube that goes into this is 8. So this is going to be the cube root of 8 times the cube root of 4. So this comes out to 2 times the cube root of 4. Now for this next one, this is going to be the fourth root of 16 times the fourth root of 4. And so then this equals 2 times the fourth root of 4. So as you can see, as you start thinking through some of these powers of 2, this can get a little bit dizzying. So again, you might have to just have this list in front of you so that you can really think through this. And some people, after they've worked through this for a while, they don't need the list anymore, and some people always need it. So it's just, you do you, you know? The other thing I want to point out here, make sure with your radicals that you're making it very clear what these numbers are here, and that it's very clear that it's like inside the radical. A lot of times when I look at this stuff, I will see people write like this. And now this becomes kind of hard to, to tell, right? And, and depending on what numbers you're using, this can be very difficult to tell. Another thing I notice a lot is that people will just drop the number out here, and that's also kind of a big offense if you think about it. So I have one more set here, so go ahead and pause and hit play when you're ready. So for this one, so I'm going to take the fifth root of 32 times the fifth root of 2. So this is 2 times the fifth root of 2. For this next one, so this is going to be the square root of 25 times the square root of 10. So this is 5 root 10. But now notice if I take the cube root of this number, now this changes the problem. This will be the cube root of 125 times the cube root of 2. And so then this equals 5 times the cube root of 2. Okay, so that covers all the examples that I have for this particular video. In the next video, I'm going to look at working with um, variables, and in other videos, I'll have ones with dealing with all the other things that we can't have on that list. So just as a reminder, please comment, like, and subscribe if you found this helpful, and I'll see you guys next time.